What a busy week we have in Destiny 2. We've just had a new game update, so we've got changes to endgame content, the sandbox, and the arrival of a new exotic, of course, Bad Juju. So we'll cover the update, Tribute Hall secrets and rewards, Solstice of Heroes armor, a hidden activity, as well as a possible new weapon reward, and a couple of Shadowkeep tidbits as well. We've got a bit of a roundup of what's going on right now, so let's get into it. What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 new stuff. Of course, first up this week, Bad Juju returned to Destiny 2, and it is essentially the main component of the Tribute Hall, which is pretty cool. So, as I covered in my video last night, we do have the new exotic quest, and a big part of it will actually be filling the Tribute Hall with tributes, and once you can put 18 of those in, you get access to the new exotic mission where you can pick up Bad Juju. I'll link the video for that down below. One thing I didn't notice at the time is that the Bad Juju Catalyst will be available after you place 45 tributes in the hall. The Catalyst will extend the duration of the String of Curses effect. The Tribute Hall in itself though is pretty interesting. The enemy tributes actually allow you to kind of continuously spawn one of that enemy type into the room, so these will be in a kind of non-combat state, so you do have this kind of firing range effect. One of the tributes will even allow you to get a secret prism weapon from back in the original Leviathan Raid, and this was shared by Primitive Rebel Gaming here, but it would also appear that there will be some kind of secret triumph for placing the final tribute. And JP Deathblade pointed this out. Currently nobody knows how to put the final tribute into the hall, but there is an objective in the text strings for the game to do it, so maybe there'll be some kind of reward if you can. But for the other side itself, there is a secret triumph to complete the mission solo and flawlessly. Unfortunately, unlike Shattered Throne, we don't get a unique emblem or anything, but still maybe something to try out if you fancy it. So aside from Bad Juju and all that content, one of the interesting things is that this confirms the secret area on Io that we spoke about isn't actually for Bad Juju. So if this isn't a piece of content that we'll get later on this season, people are now speculating, could this be part of the Vex invasions that Bungie have teased for Season of the Undying? It certainly seems possible, and as we spoke about the other day, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how Vex invasions are kind of linked to the Shadowkeep story and what's happening there. Also curious is that Bungie used the artwork for Vex Void, or what was shown alongside a Vex Void expansion that we never got in D1, and this artwork is now what they're using for Season 8. Also interesting related to this season, but also Shadowkeep, is that Savathun is believed to be responsible for kind of puppeting Galron in the Crown of Sorrow raid, but now people are speculating because we have a taken enemy in the other side mission called Born of the Hellmouth, that Savathun could be responsible for what's happening on the moon. It has certainly always been a possibility, but this adds a bit more potential weight to that theory. Also, right now, there is a community summit taking place at Bungie, where a select group of folks are getting to preview some of the content for Year 3. It could be New Light stuff and Shadowkeep stuff. Just thought you might be curious that that is going on behind the scenes. But now let's get back to stuff happening in the game at the moment. Yesterday, update 2.5.1.1 was delivered to the game, and this brought the new content, but also a bunch of changes. A lot of these patch notes haven't really been covered, so they did adjust some clan XP stuff. So they added clan XP rewards to strikes launched from the director, black armory forges, and escalation protocol. So you will earn XP when you do those activities now, but they also rebalanced a bunch of clan XP rewards that you can see on screen right here. So for the most part, that should be fairly positive. But in the sandbox, they did adjust outbreak perfected, and it can no longer generate nanites when shooting immune targets. So it's kind of a minor adjustment, but otherwise there are a bunch of fixes for weapons and pieces of gear. In Correct magazine size indicators for machine guns, an issue with the Sturm Accomplice perk, Nightshade not being available, and they removed the ability for 21% Delirium to gain stacks of killing tally by shooting destructible objects. Now, Lord of Wolves is a weapon that we know Bungie are going to nerf, but that adjustment didn't come as part of the update this week. And DMG confirms that they are planning the fix for the next update. They don't have a date yet, but they'll let players know when to expect it when they have more information. So Lord of Wolves is going to be unchanged for a little while longer yet. Of course, in the Menagerie, players are no longer able to use their chalice to gain multiple rewards within the same run. So that chest glitch has been fixed. Let us know your thoughts about that. Also, in the Gauntlet encounter, only living players will be given credit for completing a lap. So... Fixing some of the cheese there, issues with Werner Bounties not giving powerful rewards, the Rune Bonus 2 problem, and the Nessus Barge chests will no longer reset on a Sunday, so do bear in mind, those chests are now going to reset every week on the weekly reset. Now in general, they fixed a few different things, platform spawning objectives in the Truth Quest, and the problem where players couldn't progress with the Allegiance Quest, but then otherwise there were some kind of minor adjustments to Eververse. So that's kind of the bulk of the update. Obviously, some of the changes are slightly positive, and others we're not super excited about, but as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts below. 
In the game at the moment though, the Moments of Triumph stuff has gone live, and of course you can get rewards by getting a certain number of different triumphs. The kind of end game for Moments of Triumph this year will be the title seal, and we can see it in game. There are 24 different objectives that you need to complete to actually pick the title up. So basically, the first set of objectives is to complete Moments of Triumph for the year. You do have to collect all of the exotics from hidden missions, so Whisper, Outbreak, and Bad Juju amass a certain amount of gear in collections. I'm not sure what the number actually is there. But then there are some that are kind of active right now, so you need to win a Gambit Prime match while wearing a full set of Notorious gear, complete 10 Forge frames, complete 25 strikes in any playlist, complete 50 bounties, and 10 weekly challenges, and these are the live ones that are active at the moment. So I only have six that are missing, and they are very difficult ones, they're just kind of grindy ones, but then I believe there are a couple of other triumphs that need to show up once Solstice of Heroes goes live that'll actually make the title accessible. Just wanted to take a quick look at that, and I'll be curious to hear from you guys that you're going to grind for this one. We can now see icons though, for the majestic sets of gear for Solstice of Heroes this year. So these are on Destiny sets, but the perks and things like that are still classified, which is pretty curious. We can't preview what they'll look like in game, but we do have a little bit more information about some of the content. And this was posted by Vendot on Reddit, where we can see the ghost receives coordinates to a literal floating island somewhere off the coast of the Winding Cove in the European Dead Zone. It's been cheekily dubbed the European Aerial Zone, and apparently it's an excellent place to perform combat drills and meditate. Investigate the European Aerial Zone. I'm hearing a lot of comms chatter about some kind of floating island in the EDZ. Wonder if it has anything to do with the solstice. Ghosts. So the Aerial Zone will be a new space in EDZ, but also is actually an activity in itself. And Charlie Lewis on Twitter sent some additional objectives for the activity. Gives us a bit of an idea of what we might see. Things like hunt for prismatic taken, find hidden chests, defeat all bosses, neutralize targets, a mosquito arrives to support the cabal. So I believe that'll be a kind of cabal dropship that comes in. Prismatic taken has escaped, so it appears that these prismatic taken might be worth, you know, more value, more points, or more loot, however it works precisely. And there are different burns where bosses are more vulnerable to particular elements. There are also lines like something secret is hidden nearby, so maybe we'll find secret chests or objectives in this mode. It certainly sounds pretty interesting. But something you may have heard some speculation about would be a potential upcoming rocket launcher in the game. And JP Deathblade did post a bunch of information about upcoming content, and it includes just a couple of lines, rocket launcher components, and scattered pieces of a greater whole. And so people have been talking about Galahorn, or maybe Dragon's Breath coming back to the game, because these are potentially linked to a Solar Week event that's coming. The only thing I'd say about this right now is that there is kind of less info about this than what we're used to seeing if we're going to get an exotic weapon or quest. Having said that, Bungie have been classifying stuff more, so it's possible that something is coming and they could have done a really good job of hiding it. But as info goes, it is very, very minimal, so it could very much be nothing. And I'd say it's more likely not to be a thing than in most other instances where we find out info about a potential reward, right? Things like Bad Juju, for example. So I would absolutely take it with a pinch of salt. Although, the Solar Week link definitely is interesting, and also, considering how many exotics we've had so far, a Solstice of Heroes without an exotic does seem kind of unlikely, so yeah, that's my two cents on it. We have very vague information about any potential reward that could be coming. Now, just a couple of quick roundups right here. There's always conversation about the Mountaintop quest, and somebody did ask on Twitter whether Bungie may have any plans to change it, and Lars Backen said, I don't believe there are any plans around updating the quest. No promises, of course, but I'll talk to people about it. So just if anyone's wondering, that's the kind of current stance on it. I don't think it's necessarily that likely to change. Also, Bungie have been investigating the Blind Well, which has been broken since the update, and players haven't been able to reliably start up Blind Well, so that's something that's hopefully going to be fixed. And Bungie are also looking into issues where Destiny 2 is not working with the new Ryzen 3000 chip, so if you've been affected by that, obviously pretty frustrating if you're building a new rig or something. Some kind of hardware compatibility issue, potentially, but Bungie are looking into fixing it as soon as possible. The only other shout I'd point out here is that Halfpoint over on Reddit actually uploaded a Bungie documentary that they put together. And this is a full kind of 45 minute documentary all the way from 1991 up to Shadowkeep and what's happening with the future of Bungie. So I'll link that down below if it's something you want to check out. Definitely a lot of work went into it. 
But for today, guys, that is going to round up everything we've got to talk about in the video. So I hope you have enjoyed this one. Let us know any of your thoughts on the stuff that we've covered. Also, let us know how you're getting on in Tribute Hall, whether you picked up Bad Juju, any thoughts you have on the weapon or the quest. But if you've enjoyed the video, a rating really helps me out down below, guys. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more D2 content. But for now, thanks as always for tuning in, and I will catch you guys very soon.